Will satellite internet be tiny or huge by 2030? Meet Elon Musk, CEO of SpaceX, which operates Starlink. He is on a mission to bring high quality internet to every corner of planet Earth and probably also Mars. And meet Jean Makwade Saboni, CEO of Mascom, an established wireless telecoms company. I'm Simon Darling, welcome to Life in 2030. At the end of this video, I make a prediction about how huge satellite internet will be by 2030 on a scale of 1 to 10. To answer this, we look at the technology needed, see which companies are making it happen, ask how much you will love it, and show jobs that will be hired. Let's start by looking at the technology. The technology that Elon needs to deploy equipment by 2030 is already solved. Today, to get internet access to people, Gene puts up towers and digs trenches. Elon needs rockets to deploy his satellites. He's using the Falcon 9 SpaceX rockets. They are launching every two weeks in 2021, an incredible frequency, with 60 satellites at a time. You see the satellite here being released into space. He keeps the cost down by reusing the satellite launches, an amazing sight to behold as they come back down to Earth. Elon's plan is to move to launching 400 satellites at a time using SpaceX's enormous Starship rocket that is currently being tested. The technology that Elon needs to transmit internet data is also solved. Today, Gene transmits data mostly using towers and phone lines. Elon uses satellites. They're flat-packed, small, and travel in low Earth orbit less than 300 miles up in the sky. This is up to 60 times closer to Earth than existing satellites. Being so close enables them to deliver low latency internet connections at 20 to 40 milliseconds. And Elon gives good download speed at 50 to 150 megabytes per second. He uses lasers to communicate between up to four other satellites in the network. Elon today has more than a thousand satellites in low Earth orbit with the goal by 26 for there to be 12,000. This may support up to half a million simultaneous connections. He plans a further 30,000 satellites launched by 2030. The satellites orbit the Earth incredibly quickly, with it taking them less than two hours to go round. Technology needed for someone to receive high-speed internet data anywhere by 2030 is also solved. Today, people receive Gene's mobile signal straight into their phone or via a modem on their phone line. For Elon's signal, you need a small dish like this the size of a pizza box. All it needs is to be able to see the sky. It will work anywhere on the planet. Local telecoms licenses, though, are required still. In summary, because the technologies needed for satellite internet are already solved today, all of them, it points to being at the huge end of the scale by 2030. Now we look at satellite internet companies. I've got a coffee cup as my prop for this, since workers in satellite internet companies like SpaceX drink a lot of it. Internet satellite will be huge if there are unicorns, startup companies that have a valuation of more than a billion dollars. And when there's plenty of big multinational companies that are active, represented by an elephant here. Elon's company SpaceX is already a unicorn. He tweeted recently that once we can predict cash flow reasonably well, Starlink will IPO. In other words, float on the stock market for billions of dollars. He also said Starlink is a staggeringly difficult technical and economic endeavor. It's estimated it will cost $10 billion to build out the satellite internet network. And he's excited by it because it's a key part of the puzzle funding SpaceX getting to Mars. OneWeb is another low Earth orbit satellite internet company that is already a unicorn. It went bankrupt in 2020, even though it had Richard Branson's Virgin Group as an investor. It has been resurrected with an injection of more than a billion dollars, including Airtel's billionaire founder Sunil Mittal and the UK government. Currently, it has launched more than 100 satellites into low Earth orbit, with a working service planned soon. Astranis is on the way to becoming a unicorn. Its founders are John Gedmark and Ryan McClincock. Their satellites operate at middle Earth orbit rather than low Earth. This means Astranis' signal has slightly more delay because its satellites are further away than Starlink's, but its miniaturized satellites can orbit geosynchronously, enabling them to match Earth's rotation and service specific regions of Earth. 
Alaska is an early partner tripling its internet capacity when Astranus's first satellite launches this year. Interestingly, John and Ryan are using SpaceX to launch it. There's plenty of corporates that are active, including Facebook, Amazon and Airbus. Some big companies have had failed attempts. Google's Project Loon failed with its super low orbit approach using balloons, and Facebook's cool looking fixed wing drones also failed. Some established companies are investing heavily. Amazon is building a direct competitor to Starlink with $10 billion into Project Kuiper, as it calls it. And the world's largest satellite operator, SES, is investing heavily in its O3B medium Earth orbit company, where O3B stands for Other 3 Billion. Corporates are also building satellites, including Airbus for OneWeb. Because there are unicorns and because corporates are so active, this look at companies points to satellite internet being huge by 2030. If you're enjoying this, hit the subscribe button for more predictions about life in 2030. For satellite internet to be huge, people need to be giving it five star levels of love rather than one star. Because Elon really does deliver fast internet anywhere, he gets a five star rating for this. Elon transforms speeds for those living with slow or no connection. He takes their download speed from what they have today at a measly couple of megabytes per second, if anything, to an amazing 50 to 150 megabytes per second, or better, wherever you are. Upload improves dramatically from half a megabyte for many today if they have any connection at all, to a fantastic 20 megabytes per second upload, and the ping signal latency from a gamer nightmare of 100 milliseconds plus when on a poor rural connection to 20 to 40 milliseconds, bye-bye to buffering when trying to watch Netflix, Zoom calls that freeze, or losing in a video game because the connection's so slow. Elon earns five stars for the boost satellite internet gives to the rural economy. Today it suffers because Gene's poor connectivity means certain jobs can't be done there. With Starlink, rural workers have much better access to well-paid digital economy jobs, such as software development and video editing. New people will move into the countryside, wherever it is in the world, attracted by the quality of life and affordable living, and it makes the advances being made in digital delivery of healthcare, education, banking and shopping accessible to everyone, everywhere. These benefits extend to many of the 3 billion people completely unserved today by any sort of broadband access. Elon gets three stars for being affordable. Where Jean offers a service, she has price plans that most people can afford, even if sometimes data is capped. Elon is more expensive than a standard broadband package. You need a receiving dish that costs $499 and a $99 a month subscription. Some people give it a one star for stargazing. Where Jean needs to, she uses high Earth satellites that don't interfere with astronomers. But low Earth orbit satellites like Starlinks have upset astronomers like Meredith Rawls at University of Washington because they spoil her stargazing, as you see in the streaks across this image. Seeing faint, faraway objects and asteroids is impacted. Elon disputes how bad this is, but is committed to reducing it. He is adding reflective sun visors to the satellites. From the point of view of the amount of love internet users will be giving by 2030, it points to satellite internet being huge. Now we look at jobs. Here I'm being a SpaceX employee wearing a hoodie. If internet satellite is huge, then there's going to be lots of jobs hired and fired. On the hired side, Elon's Starlink team has a lot of vacancies. There's 158 listed on LinkedIn at the time of recording across multiple roles, including dozens in electrical engineering, testing, software development, supply chain, legal and customer support. It's well worth looking at LinkedIn if you're interested in getting a job in the internet satellite sector. Helping you make good career decisions is a big reason why I'm doing this Life in 2030 channel. Jobs in fast growing new sectors like satellite internet are exciting and more secure than in older sectors. I was fortunate to join the e-commerce sector with eBay in its early days and have benefited ever since. Jobs in the internet satellite industry are all around the world. Starlink and Astranis are in the US, OneWeb is headquartered in the UK and there's three Chinese low earth orbit satellite companies. 
You could set up some job alerts for these companies, it's easy to do on LinkedIn, and click to have a look at my Finding Great Jobs for Life in 2030 video. Because there's lots of jobs being hired and fired, from a jobs point of view, internet satellite is at the huge end of the scale. Now we've covered all four sections, it's time for me to make a prediction. We've seen the technology needed for satellite internet by 2030 is solved, there are plenty of unicorns already, it's five stars from so many people, and loads of new jobs are being hired. This means that on a scale of 1 to 10, satellite internet is at the huge end of the scale by 2030 at a 9. If you like this, sign up for my Life in 2030 newsletter to get updates on predictions. Click the bell to get notified when our new prediction videos are released. And go and have a look at our prediction on water from air and air taxis. I'll see you in the next video.